Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Got a phone call here sponsored by go.tagjag.com slash perfect match. Buy two months, get two for free. This is Chris. Hey, Chris, I have a question. Um, what is what is bloatware? Bloatware. Ah, that would be software that could be this big in terms of size and, and, and features, but instead is this big in terms of size and features. So it could be described that in such a, a way that, well, instead of taking up um, way back in the day, users actually measured the uh, amount of space an application or a program would take on the disk. And back in the day, it was a big deal, you know, whether an app was you know, measured in kilobytes or in megabytes. These days, it's less of an issue since space is, for all intents and purposes, unlimited. Okay, because we could always add a different hard drive, and it's relatively cheap to add storage to a computer system. Uh, but bloatware could also be described as software that has so many features in it that it's impossible to use. And the features don't integrate very well with one another. Um, you know, the antithesis of bloatware would be an application like Notepad, right? Because it's very simple. You do one thing, you type in it, and you can do other random uh, text-related things with Notepad, but that's it. I mean, there's nothing else to it. There's no bloat to the program versus something like Microsoft Word, which some have argued is bloatware. Uh, so much features and functionality that one could never possibly use everything. Now, Microsoft, I think, has refined word to the point uh, specifically with the ribbon interface which i happen to be a fan of m m surfacing some of the more useful features of microsoft word which doesn't make it any less bloatware so to speak but that again could be a relative term sometimes we want something more than notepad but we don't need something as powerful as word so you you fall towards the middle whether that's something like ps pad which is freeware for Windows. Uh, one of my favorite text editors on the planet. Uh, it's been refined over time. Features have been added, uh, but its core competency, of course, is text, text editing. You know, very, very powerful text editing. Uh, some could argue, though, that it is bloatware because so many features have been crammed into the utility that, A, it's uh, got a large footprint on your uh, disk, uh, and B, you know, it's got a lot of features that make it impossible to find the features that you want to get to. So at the end of the day, it's a relative term, but uh, it, it speaks, I think, more, at, at least at this point in time, more to uh, feature creep and overkill than it does uh, to uh, the actual size of the program. Okay, so you're saying it's, it's pretty much, you know, one of those programs that have so many features that most users don't even, they can't find them or they can't, they don't even use them. Right. Or they're just poorly implemented. I mean, let me put it to you this way. I could develop an application that does a hundred things, or I could develop an application that does five things. Which sounds more impressive to you? Well, the one with a million features sounds better. Right. The one with a hundred, the one with more. But what if now I told you okay. that that, those applications, if I clarified it a bit, I developed an applications or an application with a hundred features, none of which work very well at all, like none of them, versus an application that has five features and each one of those five features is perfect. Now, which application would you rather have? Oh well, yeah, the, the one with the five perfectly running of course. applications. Of course, it's all relative. Bloatware is, is more about wasted space, wasted time, wasted resources. And typically speaking to the inelegance of uh, presenting those features to the user, by and large, that's the, how I would de that's how I would uh, describe and define bloatware.